<clears throat> so um, please confirm you're receiving this uh, audio and visual uh, Amber and that you're all ready to go and then we will make a start immediately please What the? What happened to the? Oh, you got the brochure there. Hmm? Is that, which one's that? Is that, is that the yeah. new one or the draft no. one? Oh, that's the draft one. Like, really? Yeah. Hey, that's one. Ta.
Okay, folks. So look, we're gonna we're gonna make a start with this. Um, so I'm assuming Amber that this is uh, this that you're connected here and you can and you can hear me fine. I would really appreciate it if you have a moment just to pop a note into the chat space next to the um, next to the the, the the video, so that um, so that I know you're there and that I know you're you're active here. That would be really really good. So if you if you could do that for me, that would be great. Uh, just turn that down. Uh, so yeah. Um, so look, the the idea of this session. Thank you for asking me to do it. The idea of this session is is to give you guys a very quick um, demonstration of of what our website does. Uh, secondly, is to give you perhaps an option that you might be looking to get involved, um, and on the basis of that, give you maybe some some key information regarding how you might use this. I cannot emphasize enough how much I would recommend that you read this publication. It's called Education uh, Reimagined, and it is uh, an essential read whether you work with us or you don't work with us. It is the future of um, classroom education in uh, the UK ed education system. It is written by us, and it's available for free uh, as an online uh, uh, publication on our website. You can't miss it if you go there, or you can order it from us as a hard copy, and I'll explain that to you uh, a little bit later on. But I would strongly recommend that you have a very, very a uh, good read of that because it's something which is going to be very, very uh, facilitating for you. And, you know, for, for colleagues who uh, are looking to be in teaching in, in um, five years' time, in 10 years' time, you need to understand the skill set that's going to be required from you, and that's detailed in this publication. So we strongly recommend you, uh, that you that you have a read of it. Like I say, it's an online publication available for free on the website. Okay, on that basis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing my screen with you and, sh and showing you a few bits and bobs. Can I urge you that if you have a question, um, uh, my colleague Marta's over here in the office, can you please have a little look on the live stream and pick up any questions for me? Mm -hmm. If you have a question, please post it into the live chat and I'll do my very best to answer that for you. Marta will pass on any questions that you post uh, on there to me. Um, and I will pause at specific uh, points to, um, to, to to encourage more questions as well. So first things first, let me share my screen with you. Uh, where am I? Okay. So hopefully now you can see your kind of screen going a little bit crazy. And what I want to do is I want you to uh, I want you to be able to see this screen here. We have a student who is logged into the website here. And their profile is Darth over here, as in Vader. And Darth is depicted nicely here as some kind of flower-winning uh, kind of ice skater over here, which somehow seems to be appropriate. And Darth is enrolled in a series of courses. Now, it's a bit of an eclectic mix because this is not a real student, obviously. So we've enrolled them in, in a whole bunch of stuff. So studying with us, they're studying the roadmap, thinking, learning, and exam skills. I'll show you that in a second. They're studying an Edexcel AS unit here, an Edexcel linear GCE unit here. They're doing GCSE Spanish grammar with us. They're studying uh, uh, OCR A-level here with us, uh, another OCR biomechanics here. They've got IGCSEP uh, new qualification. They've got a legacy OCR A2 exercise physiology module. So clearly not a real student, but you know we're just looking to show you a few bits and bobs. So let, let's let's choose one of these. Let's say, for argument's sake, let's say that we work on this one, OCR, GCE, Physiological Factors. So what your student's going to do here, and the site is designed around student use primarily, is they're going to come to their My Courses page here, and they're going to click on Go to Course. All right, so as they click on here, rather predictably, the course is going to be available to them in a course listing here. So it's all set out for them in a fairly obvious and intuitive uh, methodology. And basically, the student now has a couple of options. So let's let's say they're interested in studying Unit 17 here, motor units, for argument's sake. Okay. So let's say they 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 click in here. And obviously in here, they've got an exactly, in this case, 10-minute tutorial. I will have that little just playing in the background and see if I can... So you should hopefully be able to hear that just a little bit, a little bit of that teaching in the background. And this self-paced tutorial is going to take them through the key information related to this content. You might also want to notice down here that they are being counted on which of the content they've actually studied. So at the moment, they've watched 4% of this tutorial. Now, if I maybe drag to there, you'll see that this part here stays white. In other words, We've got this build up from here of now additional content now at six percent of the total. Again, if they if they click on here, it tracks them at this point. So the student knows and you know 
whether they've watched the tutorial, whether they've watched part of the tutorial, and I'll show you the tracking bit later on, and also which parts of the tutorial have been studied. Now, there may be an argument that a student doesn't need. Let me just um, let me just turn the sound uh, down on there. Maybe the student doesn't. Uh, maybe the student doesn't need to watch all of this maybe they've studied this in biology maybe there's a reason for that and you can discuss that with them of course but in most cases you're going to want to be confident the student has studied the content now one piece of evidence of that is they're going to come to your lesson let's say they're doing this for homework they're going to come to your lesson with a coherent set of notes i'm going to show you the other piece of evidence where objectively you can know whether the student has covered the material or not so the student obviously comes in here and they're going to study this material notice about the video that i handwrite everything and that's important as I make the videos, I handwrite. I've been recording all morning this morning, for example, and I handwrite the content. That's important because, of course, approximately speaking, the rate of writing for me on the screen is going to be approximately the same rate of note taking for the student. Now, that's an important factor in the sense that students um, students have the capacity to move at approximately the same space as me. Now, who knows? They might need to pause and drag back to check something. They might need to drag forward if they've already covered something. But the, the approximate rhythm is uh, the correct one. I, I just I meant, let me go back to the screen. The, the approximate rhythm is the correct one. Another thing about the videos: notice that the background is black. And that's not accidental. It's, it might sound poetic to you, but we literally b blackness by definition is a lack of color. It's a nothing. Thingness. It's an abyss. That's what blackness is. Yeah, there's there's no uh, mixture of uh, there's there's no light at all. So we like to think in some of a poetic way that when we when we present on the black background that the knowledge emerges from that abyss from that abyss from the nothingness comes that the something come, and we also construct it in front of them. There's no PowerPoint slides here. We're not making assumptions that they can read all of the text on the slide or follow a, a pre-designed image. We literally draw it in front of them, and that's m much more facilitating from a student experience. Anyway, you see here. I'll stop the video. We've got twenty percent of the videos covered. Now, what happens here is that when the study when the student has studied. 80% of the, this video, they're going to be prompted with a question here, which asks them, have you fully understood this content? If they hit yes, that's going to report to them and you as mastered. If they hit no, remember they've already watched it, they've done what they were asked to do, but they hit no, it's going to report to you as struggling. So in that sense, struggling in this context is good. Why? Because it's going to report to their teacher and their teacher's going to go, okay, um, little Johnny struggling on motor units, where am I going to put my resources? To work with little Johnny on motor units. So it allows for that process to take place. So please recognize that in this context, struggling is not a bad thing. Ultimately, the student has done what they've been asked to do or indeed chosen to study and it's simply that they're a little bit stuck and they're asking for some other resources. Now, further down, I'll come to the quiz in a second, but what we've got here is that the student can ask a question. So the student can go to his or her teacher and they can say, I am stuck on whatever it is, please help. What does X, Y, Z mean? Okay, so they can ask that question and that question is going to be sent over to the teacher that they've selected. In your school, if all of the teachers are signed up, they can select which teachers to send it to. Now, it won't appear here until the teacher has approved it, and that's important because, of course, students can be sometimes inclined to write some interesting but very frequently funny stuff that but it is also inappropriate. So well, I'll show you in a minute how you approve that. Now, what of course, what the student's going to do now is they're going to take the quiz. So come in here, you see here it says six consecutive answers to pass the quiz. Okay, so six consecutive correct answers to pass. Now, I make no apologies that we expect perfect answers from your students. I'll repeat that. We expect perfect answers from your students. Now, if I was to work with your students and I was to give them a worksheet and say to them, right, you've got 10 minutes, got to be perfect, every single one of you. It's not fair because it's a fixed seat time and a fixed achievement rate and different people have different start points. But if I say to them, right, six perfect answers in a row on this question, but do it as many times as you need to. Repeat it. Go back to it. Try it three times and you're stuck. Study again. Come back to it and then get your six in a row. That is perfectly legitimate. And what we're therefore saying is that there's a variable seat time, a variable seat time, and a fixed achievement rate. So anyway, let's have a quick look. So this one, starting with the largest, sort the motor unit types in order, uh, in order to which, according to which requires the, the largest nerve impulse. So this one's I think it's that way around. Let's just check. Okay, so it's going to give us a bit of feedback as well, and it tells us we've got it correct. And we move on. I'm not going to read this question, but in this one, 
so, a, a number of these choices are correct. So it could be that one, that one, and that one, okay? Just for argument's sake. Now, please accept I haven't read the question. So let's say that those are the three correct ones and the student only selects two of them. When they when they answer this correctly, their answer when they answer it, that when they check it, their answer is going to be wrong. It has to be perfectly answered. Now, in my, my case, I got one out of, the th out of the four and I chose one that wasn't. So clearly it's wrong. But if I'd have chosen three out of the four, it still wouldn't mark me. Is correct. This one, a uh, slightly different one, I've got to put some text in here. You see the text is available for me here. Very simple kind of little gap fill. Obviously, my answer is wrong. And we get the feedback of what the answer should have been as we move forward. So I'm not going to answer this one. This is just a single choice. Please don't judge me. Forget. Oh, I got it right. That was lucky. Um, I'm not reading the questions, but you get the idea. We go through question five. I'm not even going to answer that one. Feedback's there. I'm not going to answer that one. Feedback's there. So we finish the quiz. You get the idea. So we do our six questions. We've got three options here. First of all, I can see how I've performed in relation to other students. Now, look, you'll notice here, for example, CSR um, SAPAC here scored 50% and had another go at it and scored 100%, okay? We've got Tom, who's at the moment stuck on 83%. <coughs> We're hoping he'll keep going, okay? It's important they keep going until they hit that target, okay? So we're looking for that model. We're looking for that model of repetition. The other thing we can do is we can go back into our questions and we can actually look at our questions and the feedback that we got for being right or wrong. And again, that's important for the student to reflect, to note take, to improve notes, whatever it happens to be. So they do that. And then finally, of course, in my case, because I didn't get my six in a, right, in a row right, I go back and I start the quiz again because we need to because I haven't mastered that content yet. Or I can go and have my dinner and then come back and have another go at it, whatever. But the student has to get that six in a row to be considered to have mastered that quiz. Okay, I'm going to pause there, folks, um, and I'm going to stop screen sharing just for a second. And then what I'm going to encourage you to do is to ask any questions you have of me on that first primary student experience, uh, first of all. So please uh, post any comments you have uh, in, the, in the chat space, and I'll wait for any uh, questions to come through from you, okay? So please do fire away any questions you have, and I'll do my utmost to answer them. So, um, yeah, fire away, and, and we'll answer those. I, sh I should have said, folks, we are going to, obviously, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate to you the primary teacher experience in a second. Uh, thanks for the question. It, it's coming up as Joel. I don't know whether it's actually Joel, but I'll assume it. Oops, I'll assume it is Joel. No, the questions are different each time, Joel. So we have a bank of questions behind each quiz. Now, there are limitations on that. So we would broadly call our course P courses what you would loosely call a content course. You know, we're not mathematics or, or MFL where you can have almost, well, literally in terms of mathematics, you have endless different variations of the same question. So let's take um, right, one of those questions was, um, you know, what what is which motor units require the biggest impulse for example you know you could probably ask that question in two or three different ways and different question types but ultimately it's content so we we aim for having a, a minimum of 15 questions behind each quiz many many quizzes have many many more than that the other thing we say is that when they repeat a quiz Yes, they might get one question or two questions that they've done before, but of course it's good for them to go through a process of repetition. Repetition is an essential feature of increasing the encoding capacity into um, the memory. And of course what they should be doing as well is retrieving that or decoding that information by answering those questions. So we make no apologies whatsoever that some of the questions they do will be a repeat, but I repeat again that they have banks of questions. There are banks of questions behind each one. The other thing I'd say, even if they get the same question again, it may Mixes everything up and gives different op give different answer options. So on that basis, the, the same question is 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 even then is not actually uh, the same question. So pl please fire away any other questions, or if you'd like me to carry on, please do uh, indicate that. Okay.
While I'm waiting for that question, I'm going to say something. I talked about mastery there, and I'll show you what mastery means in our context in a second. Please understand that when we talk about mastery, we are specifically talking about mastery with the content that's on our on our website. We are not suggesting that um, that is sufficient for them to, for example, perfectly answer uh, a six or an eight or a nine or whatever mark question um, on that content. They still need that experience. But the point we would make to you is that it's absolutely possible to apply the same principles to any task. And I repeat again, that's what we designate within this structure, and I encourage you to read it, because we, we believe that all tasks should focus on mastery so that by a broad range of activities and tasks and targets, the student can genuinely achieve mastery through uh, their, their learning of skills, knowledge, and behaviors because the seat time is variable. So I'd encourage you to have a read of that, but just understand when we talk about mastery, I'm talking about the mas mastering the content in that quiz, mastering the, the content that James has taught in that tutorial. They still need to go and master applying that content. So I think it's really important to say. So we're gonna carry on. So I wanna share my screen with you again. I'll give you the primary, although it's gonna be rather quick, I'll give you the primary uh, teacher experience. So hopefully you can now see my screen. And what we've got here, this is in some ways the boring bit first. What we've got here is we've got a dashboard. I, I'm logged in as a teacher here. You see here, this is this is the admin center for the school. My school here is called Star Wars School. Uh, and we just use it for testing and demonstration. So I'll, I'll quickly show you some bits. So the, the, the dashboard part, you just have your renewal details counting down. This is where we post to you any updates about the site. Uh, so you can look at anything that we've released. Uh, you, anyway, we just post messages and things to you here. Now, what I'm going to show you first of all is your students tab, which is over here. Okay, so over here, you're going to have all of your students. So here's all the students in my school. No doubt you would have many more. But let's take Annie Wok, for example. He's in a group called The Good Ones. If Annie Wok, it, it, slightly annoying little chap, has um, managed to forget his or her password, I'm able to reset anything I need to here. So I can change their, their details, their email, and over here I can type in a new password. I've literally typed in a new password and I can save it. And we now know that that password is for that student. Now your students can also change their own passwords. Likewise, if I had to delete Andy Wox, I don't know, he moved to the school down the road, I can delete him and uh, I have to confirm there, but let's not delete and let's keep them in there. Equally, if I want to create a new student, someone's joined our school or someone's, whatever, we've got a new student on a course, uh, let's put in, I uh, can't think of any more Star Wars characters, Marta. Star Wars characters, who have you got? Kylo Ren. How do you spell that? No. Kylie, no, that's not right. Kylo Ren. So let's have, oh, hang on. Ky Kylo Ren, and let's say, I don't know, Kylo at kylo.com okay anyway this stuff doesn't matter as you realize but when i hit create student first of all if that email had been a real email the student would have received their accreditation that way but also you see here you've got their password and username there to give out to the student and you can download so if i don't know if you imagine a situation where you created 30 students there you would be able to download them here and i, I should have said there that here you can create as many as you need to okay if you've got hundreds of students you just send us the equivalent information and we just upload them all in one go to you but the point is that you have got this information to download and you can create students very very uh, easily as look kylo ren is in there and i'm now able to edit kylo as i need to for example now your thing the teacher stuff works in exactly the same way if someone joins your teaching team look we've got two teachers in here but i don't know i can create a teacher account for amber I can't, amber I can't um, remember your surname off the top of my head. Uh, I'm going to say Amber Coke Thought because I can't remember your surname, and it's going to be some email in here. And I just create Amber in the same way uh, in there. It works exactly the same way. And then your teachers are here. Finally, on the groups, this is where all your classes exist. So we're going to be looking at this group here called the XFIS Group. I can change its name there if I want to, but I, I can delete the group if I want to. You know, if it after they finish, for example, or I can manage the group. Under managing the group, look, these are the courses my group has enrolled for. And you should, they should be familiar because they're the ones that Darth Vader was enrolled for a moment ago. But let's say they're not doing GCSE Spanish grammar anymore. We would just remove that course and that's no longer available for Darth and, and his mates. Equally, if we want to enroll a course, let's say we're going to put Spanish grammar back in for some reason, I just click on that and it's done. So that is now enrolled for all of the students and teachers in that course. Same with the teachers, works exactly the same way. 
Um, so I should say, if you want to add a teacher, I've only got Mike to add here, so I can now add Mike as the teacher. He's now enrolled, so here he is. And likewise, if I want to enroll a student in this group, who have we got? Let's put Kylo Ren into our group. So Kylo Ren is now enrolled into this group, and he's enrolled for all of those courses I, I mentioned to you before, all of these courses here. So it's as easy as that to enroll a student or disenroll a student from a group. Now, teachers, um, you may want to study a lot of the courses alongside your students. So what do we do? Physiological. So let's go back to physiological course. If you've never taught, I don't know, A-level physiology, and you don't you haven't it's been a long time since you studied the really intricate features of the shoulder you can come here and study the glenohumeral joint in detail now there's no shame in that as the teacher be reassured that taking my teaching in this format is positive for teachers it's useful it's just seeing how someone else describes it it's seeing how someone experienced describes it as well and the other thing is realize that for even for me for example if i haven't taught something for a year i'm going to come back and watch my own teaching on that concept Okay, because I'm going to refresh, just remind myself. But let's come back. We're back on my courses. I can go to my messages. Uh, here's my message. I've got this message from uh, Darth Vader here. So I've got here, I'm stuck on, please help. What does X, Y, Z mean? First of all, I'm going to prove the question, which means it's not some dodgy question the students ask me. It's relevant to all the students. So I'm going to post it to all of my class. And I'm going to say it's a nice question. I'm going to rate it positively. And then I'm going to say the answer is whatever and that now is going to go back to Darth as the answer to his question so let's just go back to my courses a second so you've got the messaging you've got the fact you can study on the site in whatever way you want I mean bear in mind that what we've got here you've got a teacher course here the students aren't enrolled for this but all of this material here is how to set up group work in your class Okay, so if you want to learn the method of one stray, two stray, you come in here, take a four minute 42 tutorial. I mean, I, I, Amber, by the way, Amber, I can't remember if you're head of department or someone else is in the department, but let's say Amber's head of department in the, in, in the school. You might even set up a group where you want all of your teachers to, to study on this course, to do group work, to improve their group work skills. And you could track it with your teachers. Now, I don't know if you want to, but you could. The point is you could. Um, it depends on the teams, right? And sometimes people want to do that, sometimes they won't. So we've got the questioning technique, group work, classroom structures, uh, learning concepts, assessment and data, and anyway. And then we've got our teaching groups. So let's come down here. We have uh, X Phys group and the physiological studies. So we've now look at the stats. Now, there's not a lot of data in here, so please excuse that. So what we've got in here is we've got a total level of mastery across our group. In my group, no one's mastered any of the content yet. But what we can see here is Darth Vader in he he is here in progress on a whole bunch of content let's get over to that motor units bit a second so look here Darth Vader is in progress light blue on motor units tutorial and motor units quiz in other words he hasn't mastered those yet so mastery on the tutorial when it goes dark blue they've watched a minimum of 80 percent they've done their homework in other words and they've clicked yes I fully understand if it goes orange if it goes orange which again is not bad it just means that they've watched 80%, but they want some more help. They're, they're kind of putting their hand up to you. If it's great, it means they haven't bothered. Okay, so here I know that none of my students have studied movement patterns tutorial or quiz. Now, the other thing you can do is you can go into the effort report and you can have a look at what time your students have been studying. Now, this defaults to the last seven days. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it from the start of May filter. How much have my st students been studying since the start of May? And what have we got here? And imagine this all full of color, please. So here, I know that since the start of May till right now, Darth Vader has studied 29 minutes, for, so basically half an hour in the last 60 days, okay? And that red bar is in school time. So he's tending to study in school. School is um, 8.30 to 4.30 weekdays. His homework time, he's only done nine minutes in the last two months, okay? So he's not doing any homework really on the site outside of hours or at the weekends. And homework is anything from 4.30 until 8.30 in the morning. So we, or the weekends. So, so here we can see he's been relatively inactive. But what I can do now is I can click on Darth's name and I can come down. This is the videos that he's been watching. So I know that he's watched these videos. Look, we've got motor units there. He's done four minutes 30 of that. And it's in progress. Nothing's being mastered. If I look at the quizzes, look, you see here, he did three minutes, 10 a minute ago on the quiz, but he it, he didn't master it. 
And I want to mention something on the on the progress report here about the quizzes. This one, for example, here is a quiz on the. Uh, this one here is a quiz on the shoulder. The way this works is obviously grey means they haven't attempted it. Light blue means they've had one or two goes at it without mastering it. Dark blue means they've got six perfect answers in a row mastered. Struggling means they've had three or mo more goes at it without mastering it. In other words, they need your help. Okay, in other words, they need some help. It might be a better way of putting it. So on that basis, you can build up a picture of where your resources are, as the teacher are most valuable across your group. And we'd really encourage you to think about it this way. Lots of teachers, I'm, I'm actually going to stop screen share in a second. Um, lots of teachers work with us and the thing they want to do with the tracking is that they kind of, they want to check up on their students. And of course, it's kind of normal to do that. But the thing we would like you to realize is that very, very quickly, what that information is going to do for you, it's going to be partly checking up on what they've done, but it's much more going to be about enriching the conversation between educator and learner. It's much more going to be about, right, okay, you're tending to study all, uh, you're tending to do all of your study, uh, you haven't done any homework, all of your study has been done during school hours, which kind of is not bad. Maybe they're going to prep after school or maybe they're using their free periods if they're key stage five students or whatever um but it might suggest that they haven't got any time in the evenings maybe they're doing a part-time job maybe they're doing too much sport maybe they're acting at the theater every night it, it enriches that conversation for you to understand that student and that's the kind of data um we want to be bringing to teachers as well uh, do be posting questions in the chat i'll have a look at that in a second the other thing i want to say about the analytics module or statistics module is that we completely relaunch that uh later this year we're putting a massive amount of development work into that and we're particularly focusing in the concept of progress over time um so if that is a if that is a hot topic in your school we're going to help you to uh to address that okay so i'm going to go back to the chat space Please feel free to post any uh, questions for me, guys. Ah, well, that's I, I appreciate that uh, comment, folks. That's a nice one. All really happy. I, I appreciate the adjective there. That's nice. Um, so look, um, I'll I'll uh, I'll kind of leave that with you. Um, I, I guess really for for you, for you guys. I mean, I would encourage you to be thinking about how you would use uh, this 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 topic area. Um, and I, I, I'd encourage you to think about how you would use this uh, this um, this service. Um, I guess it's kind of fairly typical. First usage might be like a homework strategy. Second usage might be sort of flipping that. Use a flipped learning strategy so students prepare their knowledge before they come into the classroom. That makes the classroom more active, etc. Uh, and so on. I've got a question here. Can you show us how to set homework? Um, no. Um, you speak to your students. You tell them what you want them to do. Um, but you are going to have a problem because you're going to say to them, you know, whatever, do topic one, two, three, and four, say, or, or I don't know, do, do tutorial one and quiz one. And some of your students are going to uh, are going to do tutorial two and quiz two and tutorial three and quiz three as well because they can. So my question to you would be, okay, that flipped learning model is kind of a nice one, but what happens when your students go ahead of you? What happens when your students go ahead of the rhythm of the class? So, uh, yeah, we'd encourage you to uh, think about that um and, and have a think about it but we we until we relaunch later this year will not we we are not um, putting into the site what we call assignments until we relaunch the the platform later on when we do put assignments into the site it's gonna it's gonna allow you to apply three ways of setting work the first is going to be to complete a certain number of questions in what we call uh, practice mode quizzing secondly it's going to be um uh, to complete uh, the watching of a certain bunch of tutorials and thirdly it's going to it's going to allow you to set a piece of work where the student can write a prose based answer in the site and uh, I'd encourage you for now you're using your exact exactly your your school policy based methodologies uh, which are um, to 
yeah, which are to uh, d to set the homework in, in whatever way that, that that you do not do normally planners or whatever. So uh, so yeah, so that's how you're going to do it until until we relaunch later. Please realise that uh, we do not see our responsibility here as replacing every role of a teacher. Uh, there's only one outcome if we try to do that. And that is that teachers aren't needed anymore or perceived as not being needed. What we are interested in, I'm going to flash this back at you, is building a classroom model where the teacher is absolutely secure as a stable feature of that model. And the, the requirements of them in this classroom here, the requirements of them in this classroom here, and the skill set is far it is is far higher than it is today. Today, the the primary uh, time spent by a teacher uh, in school time is uh, primarily is what we would describe um, as mechanistic processes. It's it's uh, planning to deliver, it's delivering, and it's uh, and it's marking of rote learning. Now, th that is not what the skill set of the of the teacher is going to be in in the future, and we strongly encourage you to to consider that point and have a read of that uh, documentation which is on our website um so yeah that would be i think good for you guys so any final questions before we sign off folks So as you as you post any um, any final questions that you have, um, what I'm going to say is that I'm going to send a registration form over to Amber, and obviously it's your call whether you want to sign up. You you know you're, you're very we'd be very keen to have you, but it's it's ultimately your 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 call. Um, we have a couple of different. Uh, package possibilities if you've got significant numbers of GCSE learners for example or, or numerous groups that you want to enroll which we'd encourage you to do across GCSE BTEC and A level um, then we have we have what's called a, a, a ceilinged unlimited account so you get a fixed fee uh, that you'll never pay more over the terms of the contract and you can have unlimited numbers of students teachers and courses of course if you're going to enroll smaller numbers then we have a groups package which basically you pay you pay for the number of students that you have so have a look at the site uh, I'll send the registration form over to you and then hopefully we can um, hopefully we can we can get something moving but I, I want to reiterate to you because I think it is essential that the objective of this uh, service is to in, in, improve the capacity for learners. Uh, yes, we provide teacher services as well, not least all of the teacher courses, not least the, the tracking and the messaging and all that kind of stuff, but primarily this is an experience for learners, and that's what drives us and what we're dedicated to providing. Um, and then it's just really a matter of whether you guys uh, want to get involved. And um, our core ideology is using technology to humanize the classroom experience. What we mean by that is that we see the only relevant use, use of technology in the classroom as a humanizing impact. And... Um, on that basis, again, I've said it to you a number of times, but get yourself well read on this document. I'm not trying to sell you it, it's free, um, but go and read it, you need to read it. Um, it's on the website, Education Reimagined, it's in the main navigation. Um, yeah, go and have a look. So I'm gonna sign off. Uh, all the best folks, I wish you the best. Amber, please get in touch, and we'll have a chat to follow this up, and I wish you a good weekend. Cheers. <laughs>